Hi, good morning. I'm Sahil. And I'm Ankit. And we're the founders of Alio. Welcome to another episode of All Your Questions. We're going to pick up a slightly controversial topic here. Hopefully, we don't shoot ourselves in the foot here. <laughs> but, you we know, have a history of doing that. We have, we have a history of doing that. So, so no, you can blame whoever you want. But, you know, we've been to so many conferences. And as, an, as, a, as a previous academic, I would imagine conferences is a place to learn. Yeah. To share knowledge, yeah. definitely to network, yeah. but, but very educational. Yeah. The HR, the HR conferences that we've been to, and believe it, we've been to most of them. Yeah. End up being very commercial. Yeah. Extremely commercial. Right. So what? Let's start with what are your observations from going to these conferences, and I'll try to add to it as well. Yeah. Um, and as an academic, I I love just going to conferences because it was a unique opportunity to travel. Yeah, uh, never true. got that as a gra- true, poor true. graduate student. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing I, I conferences are a great place, at least, you know, as a solution provider right now, you get to see the market, you get to see what's happening, how are people really going about their solutions. And I think that's that's useful because sometimes some trends don't really sink in. And when you go to those conferences, you walk the halls, those trends sink in a little bit more. You also start to get out of your own bubble and not think about, you know, your company and your messaging, you realize, you know, how are people really talking about it? The one thing that I feel a little weird about is, you know, if you think about customers walking down the hall, it almost feels like they're chased, right? You feel like you're chasing them. They feel like they're, they're being chased. They don't really stop by the booth because they feel they'll get a long sales pitch. That's the part that doesn't quite jack well with me. I don't know if, if you've noticed something very similar. Oh, very similar. I think uh, it's too transactional. Mm, that's the word. It's, yeah. it's too transactional where uh, you can always al- almost put, in, put it as speed dating without <laughs> any emotions even in speed dating. Right? <laughs> you just come up to the booth, you ask, you get your data, you get your flyer, you're looking at the swag, you grab your swag and you leave. Yeah. And similarly... You've got somebody on that booth who's not on the booth prospecting, yeah. trying to go around and get them. I think there's there's that challenge. The second that um, I'm almost very surprised with is how uh, how commercial it is in terms of what all you can buy hmm. at a conference, right? What do you mean by that? And what what I mean by that is you can buy every you can have a fancy booth, yeah. You can have the fanciest of booths like your. Uh, IBMs and stuff with like the whole yeah. halo on top and all that. Yeah. To the point you can buy keynote speeches. Mm. You can buy content where you show up on their website, where you show up on the emails and stuff. Yeah. And it almost asks myself is how is this serving the purpose of educating the market? Right, right, so, right. Any thoughts that you have? Um, yeah, I mean, I have the same question. I completely agree. I have been to a certain alternate conference formats. I wouldn't even call them so much of a conference. It's it's somewhere between a, a simple roundtable discussion and a conference. And I think uh, what I found, it was successful for from my perspective just because got to have a bunch of detailed conversation. I think there has to be an element in a conference where you can't pitch your product. You just can't pitch your product. You can only talk about a trend. You can talk about what's working. You can talk about specific case studies. Uh, bring out your customers, but don't talk about the product itself. And I found that in those scenarios, people felt like they weren't chased around. They felt like some discussion is happening and it can't be one-sided either. There has to be the the nature of, yeah, you said that, but that doesn't quite drive well with me. How about this other thing? Have you done something with this other thing? There, there's an element to that, which was interesting in this alternate format I went to. Yeah, in fact, um, you can even put it mathematically where if you look at the HR tech market in the US hmm. it's five billion dollars I see and typically an HR tech vendor would spend 40 50 percent of its revenue on sales and marketing right wow. so two two and a half billion spent yeah. on sales and marketing yeah and it's almost like causing a rebound effect too much noise mm. the buyer is skeptical yeah I'll see what others do I'll take a risk averse approach correct and if you if you did a bottom bottom up math and you asked yourself hey how much would it cost to really have cleaner education here? Mm. I would be surprised if the number is more than 15, 20 million. But do you think uh, in reality, people just go to conferences for education? I'm sure there's an element of you know, business and pleasure to it. Um, how do you combine the two and still 
you know, create that educational content so that people feel when they get out of it, I got something here. I think uh, you got to cater to the audience. Mm. And the people who drive uh, here are the buyers. Mm. Whoever has the money in the pocket in a capitalist economy, they're driving what's happening. Yeah. And so you ought to ask the buyers as to what is it that they're looking for. And they won't tell you that we're looking for a bunch of keynote speeches that can be bought out or a bunch of expos that have been bought out because they are already bombarded by these vendors. Right. I mean, day in and day out, cold calls, emails, you name it. That's right. That's so right. what they're looking for is education, which may come from other HR leaders, yeah. may come from technology leaders, venture capitalists, influencers, mm -hmm. but credible education that they could challenge and have a good problem solving discussion around. That's what I've heard from them. Totally. I think education is a big part of it. And part of the education is, you know, knowing about the, the technology and the problem it can solve. Part of it is about that vendor. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, a big part of education is even from that vendor, it's like going to Amazon and looking at reviews of others. I don't think that exists in the HR tech world. Like it's all yeah. self-curated. It's, it's like self if I write on my website, this customer feels it's great. That could mean I haven't written, you know, maybe some other customer who didn't yeah, feel it was great. Yeah. So there's this opportunity for people to, some influencers to come in who are really, I would say, experience focused to come in and say, they gave me a demo account. I played with this demo account. Here's my observation. Here's what I loved. Here's what I didn't love. And just going through that is going to be so much more educational, right? Yeah. Just to go on that education track. Yeah. I mean, uh, the statistic uh, I love to leave the audience with is around 10 to 25 percent of revenue is today spent on events and conferences in HR tech. 10 to 25 percent. It's wow. huge. Yeah. And so it's it's worthy thinking through what would the conference or event of the future look like and maybe that's something Ankit and I will work out work on and then put down in a blog or a future video for our audience. Sounds like our task is cut out. For us. <laughs> we have our homework. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining today. Would love your comments and questions and look forward to seeing you again in another episode. Thanks.